All right, guys, we have Tal, spokesperson for the prime minister's office, and that prime minister is Benjamin Netanyahu. The whole world knows about Israel and Benjamin Netanyahu right now, so it's a real honor, Tal, to have you here, especially with all that's going on in Israel. It's hard to believe that I'm sitting across from you in Nashville, Tennessee, so thank you for coming all this way. Well, it's my uh, pleasure to be here. The The support that I've been shown here is... Really, it's it's heartwarming to an extent I can't even describe in, in words. We want to talk about what's going on in Israel and everything, but first, just because we're here in Nashville and there's a whole ton of Israel-loving Christians surround us, how does that feel to be a spokesperson when you're inundated with all of the misinformation, the lies, and all this, and then all of a sudden to be in a community of people here, where well, there's thousands of people at this conference that are showing mass support for Israel, even so much so they're saying, we want to call Judea and Samaria the, not the West Bank anymore. We want to go in a biblical context and call it Judea and Samaria. Like this overwhelming, above and beyond kind of love of Israel to say, we love you and we support you in every way. How does that feel? So in my role, I've been doing, um, a, I'll say a hundred and something, over 150 interviews since the beginning of the war between myself and my colleagues, uh, Avi Hyman, Elon Levy, Mark Regev. It's, it's in the hundreds. And every time we have to remind people out there how we got to where we are now in a war that we didn't start and didn't want. We have to remind people of the atrocities of October 7th, of you know historical accuracies to fight the inaccuracies out there. And here, this is an in-the-know audience. I walk the corridors of the NRB, I meet people, I talk to people, and they seem to know more than me. No, I'm, I'm kidding about it, but it just, it's its really, it's its its amazing how involved people are, how engaged, how they have this courage to speak up for what is right. Um, simply uh, all around you, when, when you're here in Asheville right now, you see a display of moral clarity. Mm -hmm. That's supposed to be a given. Right. In that context, you know? And and it's not apparently out there, but but here uh, again, the support is amazing. Uh, the the people here stand for what Israel stands for, and it's not just their belief; it's their being. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. what they are. Right. Yeah. You know, there's so much. Uh, you know, most Israelis coming in the political sphere, most of the time is spent in New York and these places. So. I think it is a little bit, it has to be a breath of fresh air to know that no, it's, that there is a huge battlefront for, for and misinformation going on in New York and California and these major hubs in, in Chicago and all these places. We're seeing a lot of anti-Semitism. We're seeing a lot of things, but there are those places that really are incredibly, uh, love of Israel is so big. And I think that represents really the majority of Americans um, and, and especially in the rural areas, for sure. There's such a love of Israel and the people of Israel. Uh, jumping into to what's going on right now, uh, I want to really, we've got to uh, help those people because a lot of these people that love Israel are even being challenged. We understand right now that uh, one pro-Israel view on TikTok to 50 pro-Hamas views. Um, and I know this is your front battle that you're helping to represent Israel and understand that, guys, how are we even having this discussion where that we're, we're trying to decide who's the bad guy? Is it Israel or is it a, a brutal terrorist? That's really what's happening on the world stage right now. For you, how do you address that? And what's your clearest answer that you've been giving the media that's struggling with that ridiculous question? So first I'll say that it's true that there's pressure on Israel um, globally, but we're not fighting uh, for support or we're not going to stop because of a lack of support or, you know, uh, because we're feeling the, the, the pressure is trickling down um, because we're fighting to stay alive. It's right. just, it's as simple as that. It's say what you want to say. You may not understand the situation. It's very likely that you don't understand the situation if you're marching in the streets or not calling for Hamas to surrender and release the hostages. You're not even pro-Palestinian if you're doing that, in fact. Right. You're anti-Palestinian right. and anti-Israel. Right. Um, so the pressure is out there, but it's, it's, it's not about that. We're not fighting for support. We're not fighting this war to get nicer handshakes at the United Nations or easier questions on air from interviewers. Right. Um, we're not fighting for, you mentioned TikTok, for more likes on social media, be better spread on TikTok. We're fighting because we need to stay alive. Right. Because we're fighting an existential genocidal threat. And if it was up to Hamas or up to Hezbollah, 9.2 million Israelis shouldn't right. be there. Right. And surrounded by 400 million other Arabs that you have to be concerned about. Like, I know there's peace treaties and things there, but we've said the Six-Day War was a real situation and you're, you're not in a nice neighborhood. 
and you you are in a war for your survival, and you have to treat that very seriously. And honestly, it's it's hard to see the the globe in the state right now. You would have expected after October seventh that the whole globe would have just rallied behind Israel in an unbelievable way, which we saw that for a few days, and then all of a sudden it seems to be vanishing. Um, what it, what do you say right now? The world is is saying you should not be going into Rafa. Um, it's like this global, you're saying, I, I tell people constantly, this is Israel's war on terror. America also has been fighting a war on terror 20 more, 20, more than 20 years. And we've, we've had uh, a major fight on that. And, and you're fighting that right now. What do you tell people when they tell you you shouldn't go into Rafa and your battle against terrorism that you have to? There's, you still have friends and family and, and fellow members of your country that are sitting there in the horrors of a right. brutal Hamas, uh, 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 these hostages are horrible. I can't even imagine what they're sitting in right now. And people are telling that you shouldn't go in. So, you know, it's like, imagine somebody saying in World War II, well, you took out so many Nazi stronghold, you eliminated so many Nazis. Why do you have to go into Berlin? Why Berlin? Why? Well, because we need a total victory right. over pure evil. Yeah. When, when you um, consider... An, an operation, a military objective and, and how to operate towards it. Of course, you assess the collateral damage, what it would entail. You also bring into account the counterfactual. And what's the counterfactual of not killing bin Laden, of not achieving a total victory over Nazi Germany and imperialist Japan? What's the counterfactual mm -hmm. in this case of leaving Hamas in power? Mm -hmm. I, I know the answer, you know the answer. Right. Now, specifically speaking about Rafah, it's the southern city uh, that borders Egypt, mm -hmm. uh, from which a lot of the terror infrastructure and ammunition has been funneling in for years yeah. um, through that border. Um, this has to stop. Yeah. You know, we we accepted an unacceptable reality for far too long of 16 years of hundreds of thousands of missiles raining on our communities. This is impossible. Yeah. After October 7th, we say no more. Right, right now, in Rafah, there are still four Hamas battalions that are still operational. Just a few, a few days ago, you know, we went there into Rafah and rescued successfully in a very targeted and precise on from, um, uh, operation based on precise information mm -hmm. to over hostages. We're not going to give up right. on our stolen people. No. We're not going to leave these four Hamas battalions untouched. It's not even a question. Yeah, complete and total victory. I've heard Prime Minister Netanyahu say that many times, and we, of course, we wish much success in that. Um, right now, there's, there's more than just the Gaza threat. Mm -hmm. Hezbollah in the north, every, everybody I speak to is saying, spring, spring comes, we got, who knows? But but it looks like we have a major situation there. And I would the thing I want to focus on right now, that seems to just be an obvious. Everybody's sitting there watching that. Um, we just had a terror attack this morning. Killed another Israeli, uh, wounded 11 others. Um, they just said a, a pregnant mother was there. Um, they pulled a bullet out of her. Thank God, she's, I don't know what her uh, situation is right now. In, in the highway on, on the way to Jerusalem, leading to, leading to Jerusalem, and just Israelis were sitting in their morning traffic jams and um, three Palestinian terrorists from Bethlehem yeah. um, used their assault rifles, started spraying bullets around and... Yeah, it resulted yeah. in the killing of one Israeli and many more were injured. It's uh, We're not only dealing with, you mentioned exactly. the South, the North. We're dealing with, you know, it's, it's all over, terrorism all yeah. over. We have to send the right message in all of these fronts. How is it? You're sitting at a, you're at a Christian event. Mm -hmm. I don't think people understand that Bethlehem has been turned into a terror bed and that the terrorist attack this morning while you're sitting here now at this event came out of Bethlehem of all places. I don't, I just don't think that the Christian world doesn't understand. The misinformation is so huge that they don't understand what has this become. The enemy within is so big and so hard to deal with. What is Israel doing right now? I mean, obviously you have counterterrorism mm -hmm. uh, military operations constantly. Um, we see terrorist attacks constantly. I know that people are wondering, should I go to Israel? And I know what we are saying. I, th I believe the military is very, I mean, the military is extremely strong and we, we're we in a, a crazy situation right now with these terror attacks. That's true. Many times when I go on air in interviews, I'm being asked, why are you operating? They say the West Bank, we say Judea and Samaria. Yeah. Uh, why are you operating in this area? It's Hamas are not there. Well, Hamas are there. <laughs> Hamas are there. Yeah. Palestinian Islamic Jihad is there. Yeah. Um, since October 7th, we apprehended, I think, around 3,000 uh, terror suspects and terrorists over there. Um, about half of them are directly involved with Hamas. And, you know, if it wasn't for Israel's 
security presence in that area. Yeah. You know, Janin is a terrorist city, for right. instance. You know yeah. how many uh, terrorist attacks have, have emerged from Janin? How much terror infrastructure you have there? How much ammunition right. you have there? If it wasn't for our security presence there, it would have been just another Khan Yunus. Right. You know, you have uh, the area of Judea and Samaria, as you mentioned. They just made it a, 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 here at the public event here where they said, we no longer, as the Christian broadcasting in America, will use the word West Bank. And it's 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 because I'm involved in the narrative war. Mm -hmm. This is a narrative war, and I believe the prime minister's office. You, this is what you fight. You, and so the idea of the West Bank being called the West Bank is is for the Christians has mm -hmm. disconnected it from the fact that it's wait, it's Shiloh, it's it's Bethel, it's Bethlehem, it's it's Jerusalem, like. What is it? What does the prime minister's office think? What, what do you think when you're from the prime minister's office? Is this something you ever even imagined that the Christians would be saying, "No, we're going to call it what it says in the Bible"? The, this land is. We didn't. We're not making up a new term for it. We're actually going back twenty five, three thousand years, four thousand years, and we're going to call it what it was then. How do you? What do you feel about that kind of statement? This is as, as an Israeli, not sure. speaking on behalf of the prime minister's sure. office for a second, because just as an Israeli, it's for us, it's a given. If you watch Israeli news TV, sure. nobody would use the term Haggadah Ma'aravit. The you know, uh, like yeah. every, it, it can be a liberal outlet or you know, a centrist outlet, a right wing outlet, a media outlet in Israel. Right. It, we we say Yehuda Vashemron. Yehuda Vashemron. It's like a Constantly, yeah. So, yeah. Um, so, That's so we, we don't really have this debate, this linguistic debate so much as, as it is here. But um, let me just um, draw one parallel here. Um, after the war in Ukraine broke out, um, I, I didn't know that Ukrainian is called Kiev, Kiev, like we used to sure. call it Kiev, you right. know, and suddenly all the media outlets in, in the West, because they wanted to show support to Ukraine, they changed wow. the terminology in which they refer to Kiev. Remember? Wow. Yeah. How yeah, did I totally remember two that. years yeah. ago? Yeah, yeah, totally. Wow. And so now look at us. If, if we can start to say, call it what the Jewish people call it. I mean, nobody's going to learn how to say Yudave Shamron, but they can say Judea and Samaria, and they can say Shiloh, Shiloh, mm -hmm. and these places of deep biblical significance. Um, I think that this will help in this narrative war that we are fighting misinformation at its at its incredibly high state right now. Tal, this is uh, just such a great honor to meet you and talk with you about this, the specific issues in Israel. Is there anything else that from the prime minister's office that you'd want to tell the audience listening right now? First, I want to thank the audience listening right now because as I said in, in the beginning of this interview, you, got, you guys get it. <laughs> it's as simple as that. You get it. You have moral clarity. You know how to tell right from wrong mm -hmm. and good from evil. You know exactly why it's important that Israel achieves its, this total victory over Hamas um, because it's not only about Israel's war against Hamas. It is, but it's yeah. not. Yeah. It's a war of the civilized world against Against terrorism, That's against true. barbarism. Yeah. The year is 2024. Well, October, it was 2023. But, um, you know, it, it, we're talking about such elementary things that rape should not be used as, right. as, as a weapon of war and that it's bad to kill Jews, educate children to dream of obliterating a Jewish state and right. glorify martyrs. And, it, it, and, and these are the, the, the given things that have become so challenging, um, you know, to, to, to push out there somehow. Yeah. And uh, you guys are with us. We are with you. 100%. The, the, the support has been fantastic. And, and we have to speak out. We have to send the right message. Because if we don't, yeah. it's an, an open invitation for yeah. more troublemakers yeah. all around the world. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, I'd like to say because we're with you 100, percent and it's not just an it's not just like a, uh, a, a, a with you just because. It's, you, as you mentioned, it's a right and there's a wrong, and yeah. Israel is in the right. And anyone that has a uh, a functioning uh, <laughs> uh, ability to look at what's going on can look and see very clearly a right and a wrong. So yes, we're with you 100%, and I hope that you can go back to the prime minister and let him know that American majority. I, I still believe the yep. American majority is with him. And no matter what the TikTok and all of the crazy things that we're seeing on the public, uh, you know, algorithms and all these things, it's just crazy what we're seeing being promoted. Yep. But even at the base of all of that, I believe that we still have millions and millions and millions of Americans that stand with Israel's right, Judea and Samaria's right, like these areas that even in the narrative war and in the physical we're just behind you. And when you make a call, we're with you all the way because we believe that you do represent uh, not only a beautiful country, but you also represent God in the world. 
And when we see these barbaric things, it even lets your light shine even more. So us as Christians and the Christian world, we just really thank you. So thank you, Tal, for being here today. Thank you. You bet.